Let's now have a look at the validation. I would like my validation rules and messages to be directly associated with the input. And there will be two different methods that we're going to use. First one will have its validation attributes as an object. The other one will have it as an array. When we are going to use an object, the properties will represent the rules, whereas the values will represent the message associated with the given rule when it fails. The other option will have just rules and this one will be used when we will actually manually add validation to the HTML view of the form. And the one using object will generate the validation messages directly from within the input component. So if you haven't yet, add some validation rules with the messages. Uh, the other input you can also add with some rules only and open our assets, JS, source, components, form, inputs, input, and our text.view file. First thing we're going to do is add this validation property to our to the list of our properties. So after the autocomplete, let's add validation. And this one will be of the type either array or object. So we're going to put them within the array. So array and object. And now because we are using array and object, the default value has to be returned as a function. So what we're going to do is use the arrow function here and we are just going to return an array by default. The next thing we are going to do is to call the initialize method, which we'll create in just a moment after we've emitted the current value. So this initialize. And now this method does not exist yet. So let's quickly add it within our methods section. So initialize. And here we're going to start with checking whether the validation property is empty. And if it's empty, we're not going to do anything else. So to do this, we are going to create a helper class under the core. Let's create a new file called helper.js. And that's going to export default class helper. And this class will have two static methods. So first one will be called is empty and it will take some value. And the other one will be also static is object, which will also take a value of some sort. Okay, is empty. First, what we're going to do here is check if helper is object and we pass this value through as an argument. Then what we do is return object. We want to get its keys and we pass the value, our object in this case. And then we check if the length is equal zero, which would indicate that obviously the object doesn't have any properties. And that would in return tell us that it is actually empty. And if it's not an object, then we return and I'm going to put in the brackets. Uh, if value is undefined, then it's empty or value is equal null, then it's empty or value its length equals zero, then it's also empty. So our is empty method is now completed. Now let's work on this is object. Now to check if it's an object, we are going to return value instance of object. But if the value is instance of an object, it can also be an instance of an array and we don't want this. So we only checking for the actual object. So we check in if is an array is array and our value as argument. So that will tell us whether the given value passed through as an argument of this is object is of the actual object type. Okay, so that's our helper. Let's now close the file. And before we are going to be able to use it within our initialize method, we need to import it to this file to our text.view file. So let's use import helper from and we're gonna go one directory up two directories up three, four core, and then we have our helper. So once we've imported this file, we can now use this helper class. Let's within the initialize start with the statement if helper is 
empty and we pass through this validation property as an argument. If it is empty, then we have nothing to do. So we just hit return. Now let's create a let variable, uh, which will be called rules uh, and associate our validation property with it because we will be overwriting it and we will overwrite it when the validation is not an array. So we check if isn't array is array, then uh, and we're passing obviously this validation validation as an argument. And in that case, rules will equal object and we get just keys of this validation property. And now, why am I doing this this way? Let's have a look at our view again. If it's an object, the rules will be represented by its properties. That's why we need to get the keys of it to get pretty much what we have in the second example here. So these will be our rules. Now, one important thing, when we will have an object, then that means that we will display the validation messages from within this component. Otherwise, we won't be doing this. So because of this, let's add the new data property here, which will call display validation, and we'll set it by default to false. And if we scroll down now that we know in this case here that it's not an array and we will be displaying them, let's override this data property, this display validation and set it to true. So this way our component now knows, yes, we will be displaying validation messages because the validation property has been sent through as an object with associated messages for each rule. Okay, so after this, what we are going to do next is we will use our globally registered event bus, which we've created in the previous video, so event bus, and let's call the method fire. We want to inform our wrapper now that our validation rules are as follow. So we're going to call the event initialize hyphen, and we're going to concatenate it with the group name. So this group, if we associated group a name with this given component as well as the wrapper, then wrapper will be able to recognize the given input by the group. And the data sent together with this event will contain field, which will represent the name property of our components, name, and then rules associated with this given input. So rules. Okay, and now why are we doing this this way? We are firing this event to the wrapper. Wrapper will capture that event and register all rules for the given input. This is because I want the validation to be performed actually from within the wrapper rather than on the individual fields uh, separately. Once the wrapper has performed the validation and if there are any failed validation rules, the errors will then be sent back to each individual input component and displayed accordingly. So one last thing we need to do is to register the listener on the wrapper. After the data method, let's use the created. Created will be called before mounted. If you go to text.view, you'll see we have mounted where we're calling this initialize method from. Mounted method is called once the virtual DOM is ready. And that happens after the created method has been called. So created is called before the mounted. That's why we're going to register our listener from within the created. So it is ready. It's already listening by the time that the mounted is called. Okay, so we're going to start with event bus with the method listen. And our event, the event that we are listening to is initialize with the hyphen and concatenated with a group name. So this group and we will delegate this event listener to the internal method called initialize. This initialize. Let's create methods, object literal, and here we're going to start initialize with data as an argument. And, and now we are going to check if exclamation mark this validation back doesn't have its own property, so has own property data field. If it doesn't have it yet, then add it. This validation bug. And we go for data field, which will add the property with the name of the input field. And the rules will be its value. So data rules. 
So let's now recompile all the assets, npm run dev. And once everything has been compiled, let's open our browser. Uh, one thing I can see straight away is that we have focus on both fields. That's why the focus goes into a second one, the last one that has a focus directive associated with it. So let's go back to the editor and I'm going to remove it from our view. As you can see, we have focus here and we have focus here. Obviously, browser doesn't know exactly which one it should take. So it takes the last one. If we remove this directive from that. If we reload the page, there we go. Focus is within the first field. Okay, let's have a look at the form wrapper. Our form wrapper has captured both of the uh, fields with the validation rules. So our listener was working just fine. If we check each individual text input, you can see our validation property here is set exactly as we pass it through. The same for the other one. It's an array. First one has it uh, had it as an object. And our display validation is set to true on the first one, whereas on the second one is set to false because obviously it was an array rather than an object. If you'd like to read more about the created and mounted methods of the component, you can check the view instance lifecycle diagram on Vue.js.org. You will see the whole diagram, how the component is actually being built on page loads. Created, as you can see, is at this stage, whereas mounted is a little bit lower down. And at this point, we have virtual DOM ready for interaction.